to Freshly Forever, a podcast that gives you fascinating insights week after week. Here's your host, Vai Kumar. Hey folks, today I have the pleasure of talking to Maxwell Ford. He's yet another top junior golfer in the country and in the world. Maxwell has been a consistent and very successful junior golfer. He has records that include second place finishes at 2019 AJGA Ollie Schneider Jans, 2019 Future Masters, first place at the 2019 Jones Cup Junior Invitational, and Maxwell also has success to his credit in 2020 at the Jones Cup Invitational, finishing high, and also third place in the Georgia Amateur Championship in 2020. He was named 2020 AJGA First Team All-American. And in 2021, most recently, Maxwell has top-level finishes at the 2021 Jones Cup Invitational and at the AJGA Simplify Boys Championship at Colton Woods. Maxwell also qualified both in 2019 and 2020 uh, for the U.S. Amateur Championships. He has signed with the University of Georgia to play collegiate golf, NCAA Division I. It's my absolute privilege to have him on the show. Welcome, Maxwell, to podcast Freshly Forever. Thank you. I'm uh, happy to be here. I know you're so passionate about golf and you're doing golf now, but why golf? And when did you realize you wanted to take this up as your number one sport? Well, I'd say the question that you asked why golf is kind of a question that pops into my head um, sometimes when I'm playing, um, Mm -hmm. just because it's such a frustrating game sometimes. Um, And I I did play other sports when I was younger, and I was good at those sports. So sometimes I just think about what if I played basketball um, or something like that. Uh, But I don't know. I, I just think... I have a, a naturally a good brain for golf um, mm-hmm. and a good a good build um, for the game. So, yeah, I mean, and I just um, love for the game also is is definitely um, probably the biggest factor. Awesome. And you did mention you played other sports. So, how competitive were you in those? Very. But basketball and hockey were really the um, the main the main two sports that I played and I was super competitive in those. I, I loved them. Um, even though I, my asthma, I'd say held me back a little bit, but I I still loved them and I was really passionate about those. So as far as golf, then how does a junior golfer, anyone that's listening, how do they chalk their path forward as far as training and competing to achieve success? So what would you tell anyone that's listening to do as far as where to start with junior golf and how to take that further? I'd say the number one thing with starting is just making sure you're enjoying it um, uh, all the time when it's, when it's good, when it's bad. Um, Sometimes it's, it's a lot harder when it's bad to enjoy it. Um, But if you can enjoy it when it's bad, then, um, then you're, you're doing well. Um, so yeah, I'd say just obviously working hard um, is is something that's big, but enjoying it is definitely the biggest thing. Okay, but as far as a pathway, where do they start from a beginner? You know, what kind of tournaments would you suggest they start with, and then how can they progress forward? I think just using whatever resources are available. If there's a driving range um, near someone, then go there and hit balls until you don't want to hit balls anymore. Um, Or if there's a local Uh golf course, go play as many holes as you want. Um, So I think it's, it's different for everybody. Um, My, my path was kind of just playing as much as I can um, or as much as I could. Um, And it's, it's gotten me to this point. So I think it's, it's different for each player, but um, yeah, it's uh, whatever resources you have, I'd say use those to the best of your ability. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, for you as a junior growing up, uh, what do you think were some of the most cherished moments for you in golf? Gosh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of moments coming to mind. 
<laughs> I think one is that I always kind of work towards. We have a banquet at my golf course um, at the end mm-hmm. of each year, just kind of recognizing everyone who's um, done well uh, each year. And that's kind of always in the back of my mind because um, it, it feels really good when you when you get announced as player of the year or um, some some other big award. So I think that's, yeah, that, that banquet is always special to mm-hmm. me. Oh, of course. That sounds very, very interesting. Uh, did winning matter all the time to you or was getting better the focus, uh, would you say? I kind of say both. Um, I think getting better is, or winning is obviously the goal, but uh, then you ask yourself, how do you win? It's by trying to get better every day. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think when you break it down, getting better is the, the primary goal um, and winning is a result of that. Okay. You have trained with your brother most of the time, I believe. Did that sort of help you on your low motivation days or how has that influence been, you know, training alongside him? Yeah, um, I think it's it's definitely a blessing and a curse. It's, it's somebody that you're always kind of... Um, pushing and they're pushing you. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's good in that sense, but um, it it can be a curse when he beats me Mm -hmm. and I I get really down, even if I play well, because he is so good. Um, Sometimes I just have to look past the fact of beating him or um, comparing myself to him and just kind of do what's best for me. Yeah, I think it's, that's the tough part, right? You know, being siblings and especially you guys are one of triplets and, uh, so to do that to each other, you know, whatever be it, it's almost like one is hurt in the process. And right, yeah, so yeah. I, I, I can definitely relate to what you say. Was it fun being on the range together? And oh, what about you? Do you like the range or the course better? I'd say overall, I like the course better. Um, but being being on the range, some days. Um, David and I and um, other juniors will just sit on the range because it's too cold for the the golf course to be open. So we all we can do is hit balls. Um, so on those days, I I have to learn to like the range um, and just just do what I can, um, get creative, have fun with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I I think um, being on the range with with him sometimes we we um, don't hit right next to each other or practice together. We just kind of focus on whatever uh whatever each of us needs to be doing individually mm-hmm. um okay and i believe you always have had uh, a passion for putting and uh you have been so good at that i hear uh can you talk about that yeah um i mean i've always considered putting to be the best part of my game um and then this past december and january it just I had some some mental problems with putting. Um, I knew I wasn't bad physically. It was just something wasn't connecting to my brain, and I I didn't putt well in December and January. Um, I still finished okay in in some tournaments, but um, just recently, this past weekend, I or past two weekends, I think I figured it out. Um, so I think it's my putting has definitely definitely always been there, and it, hopefully it'll continue to be there. Oh, I'm sure. But what do you tell yourself on those uh, days when it's kind of challenging and you're not in the groove, so to speak? How do you just continue competing? Yeah, um, that's a great question. and A question that um, uh, I'm still trying to figure out. Mm-hmm. Um, just yesterday, I played I played in a, the final group of a golf tournament with a chance to win and it, it didn't go how I wanted. Um, And I was just, I was trying to convince myself to like, when I was down, I was trying to convince myself just anything can happen, keep playing. Um, But I didn't really believe that. Um, And I should have, because if I had, I probably would have won because um, it it contributed to to my bad play, um, not really believing that. And then eventually the, the people that were winning made some mistakes. And if I had just kept playing my game, I, I probably would have probably would have won. Mm-hmm. Well, that's well said. Uh, I'm sorry, you know, you um, just had those uh, challenges yesterday. But I think for anyone listening uh, to just not fall apart is a great message right there. And as far as equipment, Max, well, what about uh, or how does one choose the correct equipment and make sure that it's something well spent 
Do you have any suggestions on that? Because some seem to go overboard right away. Yeah. Um, I don't think necessarily buying the most expensive equipment is is the best option. Um, but you do want something that's that's good, that's going to last. Mm-hmm. Um, you want, if, if you do it, you want to make sure you do it right. So I would say going to a local golf store or golf course where they can fit you for the right clubs mm-hmm. um, based on how you swing the club. Okay. And how does that matter when you say fit you for it? Um, I know having the right size equipment, all that comes into the picture, but for someone to hear it from you, how does that matter or how can that impact someone if they make a wrong choice? It's really important because you can you can buy golf clubs and they could be wrong and you could not even know they're wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, It just might, it might contribute to um, I wouldn't say getting worse, but it'll hinder your progression. Um, So if you, if you're going to get golf clubs, I'd say definitely make sure you're getting the right golf clubs, um, golf balls, all that sort of stuff. Okay. So does your uh, coach help you figure that out or who comes into the picture at that stage? Yeah. um, I have, Titleist is a golf company and they, mm-hmm. they help me with my fitting. Um, they come to my golf course and um, watch me hit some golf balls and they do it really professionally. Um, but I've also had it done or I've also heard of people having it done at like the PGA Tour Superstore mm-hmm. or Golf Galaxy or, or some other um, golf store that are they also do a really good job. Excellent. I think that's a good tip for anyone that's starting. Uh, can can it also lead to injuries if, if someone does not have the correct equipment or the correct size equipment? Yeah, I think that could could potentially um, lead to injury if you're if you have a club that's too light and you're trying to swing it too hard and you hurt your back or something. Um, that that could definitely happen. So um, yeah, again, getting the right equipment is definitely important. Okay, excellent. That's a good suggestion and a great tip right there as far as the need for it. As far as your game, Maxwell, how do you think your game has transitioned over the years? Or what was the turning point, you think, in your journey? And was consistency always your asset? I don't know if I had a turning point. I've kind of had multiple turning points. Um, Or actually, maybe I I had a turning point just recently Uh in... um, in January, this, this 20, uh, the start of 2021, I've, I've done really well, um, despite not putting well, um, I'd say, um, I haven't really had one turning point. It's just kind of been, um, steady progression and, and regression. Cause that's, that's how it goes. You're going to have, um, good months and bad months. Uh-huh. Um, but eventually you'll, you'll start to, um, get better. Okay. And so it's a matter of perseverance, correct? So how important does the consistency aspect come into the picture then in one's game? Yeah. Um, I actually, I read a quote yesterday that said, you don't, um, it went something like you don't see the plant, the, or the plant doesn't grow the day you, you plant the seed. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's, it basically just means like you have to keep working even if you don't see the results. Mm -hmm. Um, which is what I did in December and January. I worked really hard. Um, even when I, I didn't see the results and it didn't feel like it was working, I just kept going. Um, and I'm going to continue to do that because, I mean, I'm, I'm starting to see the results now, but even if I hadn't, then I would just I would just keep going because eventually um, hard work definitely pays off. Oh, absolutely. And Maxwell, very well said in terms of the analogy that you use there. Um I think, you know, it's just fascinating for you to say something like that, you know, makes it all the more interesting. You are someone that has had great results. You know, you have uh, placed high in several tournaments. You have won some tournaments, you know, in 2019, 2020 and all of that. And for you to say that, I think, you know, that also speaks uh, of your modesty there too. Uh, uh, that's that's just good insight there. How about, Thank you. Um, Golf as a predominantly individual sport, how do you think that makes it uh, challenging when you're playing and how do you figure all that out? Yeah, it's definitely um, 
it's not like the majority of other sports where you're on a team um, and you can rely on other people or, or go sit out on the bench when you get tired. Um, you're definitely going to feel alone on the golf course sometimes. Um, so, I mean, I, I think it prepares you well for life because you're not always going to have someone right by your side to, to guide you. Sometimes you just have to um, do that on your own. Okay, that's uh, well said, because it's again, you know, the mental side comes in, right? You know, like you just have to figure things on your own, good or bad, you know, you're just right. out there for yourself and you just have to put pieces of the puzzle together. And as far as um, NCAA golf, I know you have been recruited and you're a college commit already and congratulations on that. So what do you say um, to someone, what's your input having gone through that process as to how one goes about uh, the college recruiting phase? Um, What I was always told and what I believe to be true is just play golf um, or really with any sport. I don't have a lot of experience with um, recruiting and how that goes with other sports, but I think just playing the game and letting your game speak for itself um, is will will speak more than sending an email or, or calling a coach. Um, if, if you play well enough and if you're doing the right things and conducting yourself well, then coaches will come to you. Mm-hmm. Okay. So did you think about, uh, okay, I need to sign up early or did you just uh, have the process just take its course and, some people tend to get very impatient about it. So what's your advice to people on that front? My, my um, recruiting process all went very smoothly. Um, I, I called a few coaches at the start of my um, recruiting process, but over time I started playing better golf and then coaches started contacting me. Um, I know other scenarios where players reach out to a coach um, and then the relationship builds and um, they end the player ends up committing to that college um, the with the player reaching out to the coach first not the coach coming to the player um, so I know it, it can work work both ways but from my perspective um, I think just focusing on the game is always more important than trying to persuade a coach to let you go to that school mm-hmm. okay back in a moment with our guest on Fresh Leaf Forever. You are a college commit to playing for UGA and looks like it aligns with the color you have worn the most since childhood. How does that feel? Yeah, I think it was I think it was definitely a factor, um, just subconsciously. It wasn't like I didn't like think about okay this this uh this college wears red this college wears blue i like red more um i think it just kind of just kind of happened mm-hmm. um but yeah i'm wearing all red right now um and i i wore all red growing up and since i committed that's just uh it's gotten even more red yeah it's crazy how um things align naturally in life right you know yeah. just, it's just meant to Definitely. be i guess and that's yeah. fantastic and I also know you're very analytical. And how do you think that reflects on what you do on the course? I think it's um, it's a blessing and a curse. Um, sometimes I get I get too in my head and start thinking and um, where mm-hmm. I should just hit the ball and go hit it again. Um, but I, I think it definitely helps me more than it hurts me. Um, I'm thinking about some things that other guys aren't thinking about, um, which I think in the long run, it does help and hurt me, but I think it does more good than bad. Okay. And uh, if there is like uh, one instance, you would say where, you know, your analytical skills have been more a blessing. Is there anything that you want to say here? Yeah, I think this past weekend, um, I was taking more time to read my putts than than other players were. Um, and I putted well, I putted really well. Um, I heard a lot of players complaining about the greens and how they couldn't read them and how, um, it just wasn't working, but I, I didn't have any trouble with it. So I think, um, thinking about it more and analyzing more definitely helped me there. Oh, awesome. And how early do you start preparing for an upcoming, 
uh, tournament, say in the sense, every course is different, right? You know, the the trajectory or, you know, the, the terrain, if you will, is different. So how do you physically, mentally prepare to be in shape to handle that situation? I think every golf course is different, obviously, but um, if I just prepare the best that I can and control what I can control, um, then that's the best thing that I can do. Um, so my preparation doesn't really change based on what's coming up. I'm kind of just going all out all the time, um, just trying to do the best, the best thing for me. Um, and that's, that's different for everybody, obviously, but the best thing for me is, um, is, is doing what I need to do always to, um, to get my game to, to be ready. Um, it's, it's always ready is what I'm trying to say. It's not, it's Mm. not good two weeks before a tournament, um, or better two weeks before a tournament than it is one week before a tournament. Um, I'm just always trying to get better. I think it reflects on your consistency again. So that's, that's also a wonderful message, uh, Maxwell. If you were to say, um, okay, there's a one aspect of the game that's personally very satisfying to you or um, something which is very enjoyable. And if people were to talk about Maxwell Ford and golf, what is it that you would think is the most enjoyable aspect? Um, I would say personally, it's um, the mental side, not mm-hmm. just when when I'm doing really well, but when I'm, when I'm down and, um, it, it doesn't look like I should be staying positive or, um, thinking about the right things. And then I do, um, I think that's, that's the most fulfilling when I can walk off the golf course, knowing that I did everything I could mentally, um, to, to, um, do the best that I could physically, um, which they, they, uh, they play on each other. Um, so if, if you're doing well mentally, then, Eventually, even if the results don't show up right away, the the physical aspect is going to come. That's just a phenomenal message coming from a teenager. I'm just amazed at your composure and what you just said right there. And kudos to you. So what then is sort of your recipe to success? And if you were to say, okay, this can be the roadmap to success for someone playing junior golf, what would you say Maxwell playing as much golf as I can um, is something recently that I've seen to uh, to help me a lot um, I did I did a lot of it in in December and January and I'm starting to see the results now um, but I think again what you said consistency um, just just keep keeping on keeping on um, even when when it doesn't feel right or um, when it's it's not looking good I just keep going Okay. And we talked a lot about your college commit to UGA and then playing NCAA uh, collegiate golf. Is professional golf on the cards? Yeah, that's um, that's definitely something I'm working towards. Um, it's not, some people say they want to be like world number one um, or um, win this amount of tournaments. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, I want to make the PGA Tour. I want to do all those things, but um, just getting seeing how much I can improve and seeing how good I can get is, is the main goal each day. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I'm sure you'll be there, you know, given your composure, given your perseverance, your persistence in doing what you do. I think definitely I see you there. Thank you. Uh, That's the plan. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sure. And uh, it's always good to have a plan and work at it. And uh, you are definitely doing the right thing there. Okay, we talked so much about golf. Is there something you love doing other than golf? And uh, well, what would that be? I don't necessarily think it's it's the best habit, but I love playing poker with my friends. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's I don't I don't think it's necessarily bad. Um, it's just sometimes is sometimes it's not good for the the bank account. Um, but yeah, we've been playing a lot of poker online and in person, um, with my friends. So yeah, I love watching poker too. That's, that's another thing I like doing. Is that because of your analytical side that, you know, you have like an extra love for that? That could be it. Um, David doesn't play poker. He just, he doesn't want anything to do with it. Um, so yeah, I think the analytical side of me, the, the side that likes math and, 
um, calculating like what percentage chance I have to win each hand. Um, I, I definitely like that aspect of it. Okay. Is that what you do on your off days or say like on rainy days at a tournament or is, I also read that, you know, you guys uh, used to play ping pong and there have been several battles over there as well. Yeah. uh, Ping pong's another, another huge interest. Um, Usually golf tournaments that we go to have a ping pong table uh, set up for the players to use. But once COVID happened, that kind of died down. Um, So I haven't been playing a ton of ping pong except for just at my friend's houses um, from, from time to time. So I'm a little rusty, but yeah, I, I definitely love ping pong and poker. I'd say, I'd say equally. Um, I don't know. It, it's kind of a toss up, um, but yeah, they're, they're different, but I enjoy them both. Okay. And let's talk a little bit about the support system around a player. How important is it that the people around you do the things that they need to do and what would those be and for them to do it right and who shaped your game the most? I think my my swing coach has definitely shaped my game the most. Um, okay. I think having people around you that, that will support you um, no matter how you play is definitely uh-huh. important. And my parents have always been really good at that. Um, regardless of how I play, um, they're, they're supportive. They they uh they enjoy watching me even when it's bad. Um but yeah, I'd say my my swing coach is is definitely um the main the main help to my golf game. He helps me mentally and physically. Um and he's he's actually moving to St. Simon's Island this May. Um so I'll have a couple of road trips this summer and while I'm in college to go see him. Um so yeah, that'll be that'll be fun. Okay. And any do's and don'ts for parents uh, who have junior golfers competing in the game? From my perspective, I would say my parents have always been very hands off. They haven't. Mm. My dad has never really given me swing advice, or I, I guess he used to try, but he stopped doing that once he realized we weren't going to take it. Um, mm. But I'd say um, not over coaching a kid. Just let let the kid figure out what they want to do, um, how they want to swing it with their coach, obviously. Um, I think a coach is, is definitely an important thing. Um, but from a parental standpoint, I think hands off is definitely better and it's definitely helped David and I in our, uh, in our golf careers. Oh, uh, I can certainly get that message coming from the folds, uh, both you and, uh, David, uh, Really, really, you know, very, very significantly, I would say, uh, because it's not easy for any parent to be, you know, hands off. And I think your parents have done a phenomenal job there. Yeah. Uh, Because there's always free advice, right? Right after someone wins or loses, oh, hey, you could have done this, you know, differently. Or why did you do this? Or why did you do that? Yeah. Yeah, I I agree. I think it's definitely important for people to realize that. And that's a good message. I like that. Uh, as far as mental makeup, we definitely talked about it, but what kind of a mental makeup you would say one should cultivate to be able to enjoy the game and succeed? I don't think there's, there's one, um, one trait that, um, well, I I don't think there's one specific type of mentality that's necessary, um, for someone Mm -hmm. to succeed. Uh, but I, I think there are a couple things that all all players who are very good mentally have, and that's um, staying patient and staying positive. Um, mm-hmm. Those are two things that you can always control, um, regardless of how you're playing um, or how everyone else is playing. Is staying patient and staying positive. So I think those are those are definitely important. Mm-hmm. What makes you then uh, most curious when you're in? the golf course say at a tournament you know what is it that you think uh you really are desperate to you know kind of oh how is this other person going to do this or that or whatever that might be you know what what would you say to that um yeah i mean i think everyone's always curious on if they're winning or losing um or whatever i was i know i was yesterday um i was probably doing a little bit too much analyzing um in that sense but um yeah i think just playing your own game is is always good um it it doesn't matter 
something that I hear all the time is just, just do what you can control, control what you can control. Um, and sometimes it's hard to do that when the people around you are playing really well, um, when your opponents are doing really well and you're not. But at the end of the day, that's what's going to help you the most. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well said. Uh, as far as injury prevention, fitness, or other sp- sports, you know, like kind of complementing what you uh, do on the golf course, or as an aid in relaxation, just like we talked about earlier with your ping pong and whatnot, uh, nutrition, everything. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I've always considered myself to be pretty physically fit um, from playing sports growing up. Um, and on the golf course, we walk probably five miles each day. Um, so mm-hmm. that keeps me in shape. But just just this past winter, I started working out more. Um, stretching more and I've felt a lot better physically and mentally. I think that's, that's a huge part of it um, is working out and it's, it's helped me a lot and it'll, it'll continue to help me a lot. I'm sure. We have talked enough about the sport side of it. What about your interest on the academic side? Well, I just finished. Well, actually I haven't finished yet. Um, I have a one final left for um, my dual enrollment classes, which has been uh, those have been really tough. Um, so I'm kind of kind of sick of the academics a little bit right now, if I'm being honest. But I do like math. Um, math has always been kind of my favorite subject. Um, not to say that um, I always love it, but it's a lot of times it's better than English or or history um, or something like that. But yeah, I, I think math is math is pretty good sometimes. Okay, and. Uh... What is it that you want to pursue academically? I don't know yet, honestly. I've been kind of thinking business um, or sports management. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of the guys on the Georgia golf team do sports management. The majority of the team does. And I I definitely like sports, obviously. Um, I like all sports. So that could be something I want to do. Um, but I'm just not sure yet exactly what I want to do. It's probably going to be either business or sports management, but I'm not sure exactly what. Okay, and whatever you you do, I'm sure you'll do well. And of course, okay. the professional golf side is always there, um, and we'll keep an eye out for you. As far as role model and uh, your two cents worth to every listener here, or anything else as a takeaway, what would you like to add, Maxwell? I would just say keep going. Um, perseverance is something that I've learned. I had a rough 2020. Um, I just kept going. Um, and this just recently I've started to see the results. Um, so I think just, uh, just keep working hard, keep practicing, um, doing what you love, even when the results aren't there. Mm -hmm. Well, (laughs) you say this in spite of the fact that you qualified for the 2020 U S amateur championship and, you know, you were, uh, very high on the Jones Cup Invitational in 2020. And, you know, again, once again, hats off to your modesty. But I guess, you know, you set the bar really high for yourself in terms of what you want to achieve. And uh, I don't blame you for that. And uh, best wishes, Maxwell. It was such a pleasure having this conversation. And again, I think uh, one can certainly take away the uh, need for consistency and being very driven Um, and uh, the aspect of you being technical and analytical, I think how you can turn that to your advantage. I think you spoke enough about that. Thanks a lot for taking the time to be on the show. And uh, on behalf of the listeners and uh, myself, we wish you the very best. And uh, we'll check back with you again in the future. Good luck at UGA playing collegiate golf. Thank you. I had fun. That was fun. As always, it was a fun and insightful conversation with yet another guest here on Freshly Forever. Before I sign off, folks, let me remind you to subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or Google, and follow the podcast on Instagram at Freshleaf Forever. That's one word. And on Twitter at Freshleaf Forever. One, The website is www.freshleafforever.com. That's one word.
make sure to send me your feedback and keep enjoying the podcast. I will see you back again next week with yet another guest and yet another interesting topic. Until then, it's by saying so long. Bye.